Hiya! Right, we're back here with Toro. I'm out with Lyndon. We've got two days of Spanish twisties on the 1250 and the new 1300. Oh, I love this bike. Love it, love it, love it. This thing just has so much poke. You just cannot test the bike in the UK at the moment. Hiya! All right, well, I've not been on a 1250 since I got my 1300, so this will be interesting. Straight away, straight away, you can feel it. Just literally pulling away as you let the clutch out. On the 1300, there's pull. Straight away, all the way through as well on the throttle, as you turn the throttle, right from the get-go, from like 2,000 revs onwards. It is a beautiful bike to ride, the 1250, it really is. It does feel beautifully balanced. I'm quite interested to jump straight onto the 1300 now. Right, well, Lyndon and I have just swapped bikes, so I'm now on the 1300. Instantly, straight away, this feels so much lighter, more nimble, smoother. It can't take anything away from that 1250. It's still a fantastic machine, but this is just, this just raises the bar. Certainly for road riding. We're going to do a little bit of trail riding soon. Ooh oh, I love this bike. Love it, love it, love it. And now we're just going to be going on to do some sort of light trail riding. So we've whacked it into Enduro. It's the same as the 1200, 1250s. Just the mode button there, nice and easy. But standing up, the 1250 has a beautifully sculpted tank and it feels like I can get properly sort of connected with the bike. The 1300 doesn't. Such a beautifully smooth engine. So this is me in first gear at the moment. Bit snatchier on the power delivery as you'd expect, but again, it's not, you know, you can certainly live with that. Tell you what though, my legs are feeling it. <laughs> that is a beautifully smooth engine, isn't it? It's not a lot, even first gear is, is doable. You know, it's like, it's not snatchy at all in first. Well, I've never ridden it off already, right, I let's swap them over then. Yeah, okay. Straight away, as soon as you jump on this, this thing just feels bigger, more cumbersome. Oh, yeah. yeah, this just feels so much bigger. Wow. Okay, so, stand up. Yeah, I do prefer the tank on this. You know, I really feel like I can lock into the tank. Ooh, this, the 1250 feels sort of easier off-road, but as soon as I had to like do any sort of manoeuvring or slow down, I want to be back on the 1300. But again, it doesn't make this 1250 a bad bike, it's not. It's an incredible machine. But that 13 is just raising the bar by quite a bit. Yeah, dare I say it, it's almost enjoyable. <laughs> almost enjoyable. I feel more at home on this off-road. I feel more comfortable because I can lock in with my legs, I can grip this tank. You know, this is not a bad bike, it's an amazing bike, but that, that just, it's a leap forward. That's more agile, it's more athletic, it's more nimble, it's got more power, it's smoother in the, the throttle delivery. It's just a better bike. if you don't like off-roading up here. Whee! <laughs> Slid in the mud. <laughs> ah, I'm back on the tarmac. Ah. <laughs> Enjoy that? I'd have thought, with the trophy model, I'd have thought they would have given you the off-road pegs. Oh, yeah, I, I thought you got them on, on this model. Yeah, I wonder if they've given you the right pegs. So it's that and about one finger. Uh, it's maybe a smidgen, just like maybe half a finger. It's a slight difference. Right, so back onto the roads. So I'm staying on the 1250, London's on the 13 because I last rode the 1300 on road. Obviously, I've got fresh memory of what the 1300's like. So let's see what the 1250's like. I feel like I'm having to work this 1250 
a little bit harder than I normally would riding with Linden. And I don't mean like Linden isn't slow. Linden's a, a, a good, proficient, rapid, progressive rider. But he does seem to pull away much quicker and easier than he used to. <laughs> right, back on the road. I'm on the 1300 now, Linden's on the 1250. So, 2023, 2024, BMW 1300 GS, what I don't like. First things first, battery. Now, it doesn't seem to be an issue here, and it's probably because it's a warmer climate. But on my bike, back home, 40% of the time, my bike won't start on the first try. This one doesn't seem to do that. This one just has started every single time. Right, what else do I not like? The layout. It's almost identical to the old GS's however there are a few things missing the button for your like your spotlights if you have them fitted that's gone it used to be there that's now integrated into your little favorite thing this thing here the heated grip button that's gone that's now incorporated into this thing so what you have to do now all that sort of stuff your suspension dampening settings all of that it's all via this button here on your handlebar. So you hit the sort of favourite button there, and then that gives you access to all this. And you use the wonder wheel to go up, and you select what you want to allocate to that, this little rocker switch here. And you can only do it one at a time. So if I push this button here, watch the screen. So I can make the screen go up and down. But if I want to activate my heated grips, I have to push that button again. I've got to go up to grip heating, select OK. But it's just annoying, because it does take your eye off the ball. You know, you're trying to concentrate up here, but you're constantly having to look down to this display. So that's one thing. Whilst we're on the switch gear, backlit. Why are they not backlit? It's something BMW have sort of got the bit between their teeth and they're saying there's no need for it. You also probably hardly ever ride in the dark. And I mean the proper dark. And I like to know where I am. So if I want to select something, I would like it to be backlit. When I've ridden the likes of the KTMs, I think even Triumph has them backlit. It just makes life easier. So when you're paying big bucks for one of these bikes, it should have that, in my opinion. The foot pegs, they are too small. I know you can get the Enduro ones, but why have they made these so small? I've mentioned that rear integrated tail light. I don't like that at all. I do think it's dangerous. I think your indicator should be highly visible and discernible from your brake light and the tail light. There's walk-arounds with that. But again, you're gonna have to spend more money, which you shouldn't have to do when you're spending 20 odd grand, you know, 21, 22, 23 or more on a bike. I don't like the 19 liter fuel tank. Why have you done that BMW? Well, I know why. It's obviously, it's all to do with the aesthetics. And yeah, you're still getting roughly the same sort of mileage. I'm seeing about maybe 10 miles less. But it's hard to say anything negative on this bike when it is so beautiful to ride. It's just effortless. Okay, so this is called the Puerto del Sol. Is it Pass of the Sun or something like that? Apparently it's quite a famous sort of Stelvio type road. Look at the view to the right. We just saw this massive eagle up the top there as well. I thought it was one of the big vultures that you get. But there it is there. There he is. It's definitely an eagle. Can the day get much better? I know some of you out there will be going, yeah, you could be riding a KTM. It's definitely the more fun bike to ride, but this, the 1300, do you know what? Gives it a damn good run for its money. Boom, right, we're gonna swap bikes. Okay, so back on to the 1250. Wow, this thing feels like an oil tanker now. <laughs> it's nice to get back on this. It definitely feels considerably bigger. You know, the, the 1300 feels like a racehorse. This feels like you're on a big working horn like a Clydesdale or something. I thought I was going to jump back on it and just be like, no, I want the 1300. You know, this is by no means a barge around these corners. It's still really nice and agile. It's a close one on these tight ones. I think I actually ride this better in the tight stuff than I do that. 
going to do the 1300. I don't think this is as engaged a ride as the 1300 is. I've just sort of sat on this bike doing it. Right. I'm trying to appease Pete English and I'm trying to keep it in third gear for a lot of this. Like Pete does. So I'd go to second there normally. But Pete just keeps it in third. And it'll do it. It does it. It's actually a lot smoother. And you've got more drive out the corner as well. It's almost like Pete knows what he's talking about. All right, well, we've just had a spot of luncheon. I'm back on the 1300s and we're back on the twisties. The last few hours, it's interesting that, chatting with Lyndon over lunch, we both independently said that for that tight Nadjeri zigzaggy stuff, the Puerto de Sol, the 1250 was the better bike. It was the easier handling bike, easier to chuck into the tight stuff. But we both prefer the 1300 overall for the engine, power. It's just so much easier to reel back any um, distance you lose from someone in front on this. It's just a slight twist of the wrist, bang, you're there. I don't think I've done this one before. Faldi de Gibalto. Fluent, fluent folks, fluent. This suspension, even in dynamic mode, like this is this is quite firm. The clever suspension the GS has is it figures out what sort of terrain you're riding over and it adjusts that ESA suspension, it adjusts it depending on your riding style and the terrain that you're currently going over. So you can be on beautiful flat sort of A-roads, cranking on. And then you can turn off onto a side road like this, which is fairly undulating. And the bike just sorts itself out. We're on the motorway now, I'm back on the 1250. Uh, it's quite blowy here, Lyndon has the screen set down low. So obviously, 1250 doesn't have the, ele the electric screen. So you have to, I mean, it's we're really picking at things here. You just have to lean forward, turn the screw, and bring the screen up. There you go, have a look at those. See what I mean about the indicators? There you go, that's the 1300 there. We're really clutching at straws there, trying to find, you know, things now between the two bikes. It's been a really fun day. But it's been quite a, an interesting day to, to jump on and off the 1300 and 1250s throughout the day on a variety of different types of road and, and surface. And both bikes have their pros and cons. So that's just normal daylight at the moment. Daytime running lights. Indicating. And braking. Now see how it's almost masked. You can see it, but it's definitely not as discernible. There's a dedicated indicator. Really don't like them. This is interesting, folks. I was talking about that 19 litre fuel tank. Well, the fuel lights just come on on the 1250 and on the 1300, it's not. Interesting, because I thought I was getting about 10 miles less on average uh, to a fill up on the 1300, but mm. and we haven't been hanging about today. We've been enjoying ourselves. So both started with fuel full tanks, I think. Right, we stayed here last night, Antiquera. 20 to 10 in the morning, beautiful blue skies. It's January, happy days. Ooh and we're lost, again. Okay, straight out the gate. We've just come out of Antiquera and we're onto this banger. Ooh oh, and we turned straight off it as soon as the cameras come on. <laughs> Mind you, this isn't going to be a bad one. This is the A343 we're on now. Oh yes. So I'm straight on to the 1300 today. We'll continue to swap between the two, but um, I think we're both pretty set in what we think of these bikes now. Both seem to be singing from the same song sheet, to be honest, chatting about it last night. This thing just has so much poke. It just devours these roads. That power comes in so much quicker on the throttle there's no sort of lag at all 
That's the other thing with this 1300. You can be in, if you were in third on the 1250, well, you can do that in fourth on the 1300 because it's got that added sort of torque. You can be that little bit lazier with your gearing. Well, that's a good or a bad thing. It certainly makes riding easier. It's basically, it's like a supercharged scooter. Now, there's quite a few 1250 and 1300 comparison vids out there, but I tell you what, you just cannot test the bike properly in the UK at the moment. You can't ride like this in the UK. Now, this bike is totally different to how it rides at home. Obviously, I have my triple black 1300. I've done a good two and a half, three thousand 3000 miles on that, but it's never been ridden like this and certainly never on roads like this just comes alive. See how easy it is to reel in the 1250. I'm just sat in third gear here. Let's get the drone off and have a little look. Lyndon jumped off after doing those drone shots. First thing he said was, you know what, I think for this type of stuff, I prefer that 1250. It just, it just drops into the, you know, drops into the corner. Just that sort of a little bit easier and quicker you could just put this beautiful 1300 engine into that 1250 chassis maybe but then i really like the way this 1300 1300 handles outside of the really tight nagery stuff i prefer the 1300 the way it handles to the faster stuff so it holds a line beautifully at speed and through flowing bends Okay, right, same thing, and now I'm on the 1250. Oh, see, just jumping on and off these bikes it is really beneficial. It definitely sinks into the slow corners better, but I still prefer the 1300. 1300, that engine is just sublime. It's beautifully light and flickable, the 1250, though, for this tight, slower stuff. On a little back country scratcher here. Quite a technical road this, there's lots of um, undulations in the road, lots of changes in road surface, there's bits of sand and gravel for you to deal with, overhanging vegetation in places, a lot going on, it's, it's a good fun road to ride. Up and down the box, moving around on the bike loads, shifting your body weight all over the place effortless on a bike like this so we just swapped over now I'm on the 1300 I just rode quite a bit of this trail on the 1250 100% this is the better bike there's, there's no ifs ands and buts anymore and it's not like the 1250 was to the 1200 you know the 1250 felt like the 1200 but the 1300 is it's just a completely new bike right so road into dynamic pro sorry enduro into dynamic pro i love that changing the modes on the go you don't need to stop put it this way folks i'd still have the 1250 over the ktm to own yeah this is just beautifully balanced it's just glorious right this is something i don't like listen to this wine can you hear that that's very Triumph, sort of triple-esque, that wine you get when you roll off the throttle. I think I'm in line to get one of the new Jekyll and Hyde exhausts for this when it comes out. Mind you, that's not, that doesn't decat it, that's just a slip-on basically. I might look at decatting this, you know. Sam Vincent chatted about BHP, the lads over at BHP. Might see if I can get this to them to work their magic. Right, we're going to go and have some splosh. Right then, folks, there you go. I mean, um, there's no definitive answer, I think. The, the 1300 is definitely the better bike. You know, you wouldn't be disappointed with the 1250, would you? If, oh, no. Right? It's like the 911 Porsches. They, they just keep making that progress. Yeah. This is quite a big step, though. I think if you look at the bike and the design, the, the detail have gone into. This is quite a significant step. It's a step up in every way. Every way. There's no question. 
no question right folks uh hope you've enjoyed this one if you fancy coming out and spanking up and down these beautiful roads and these trails on these type of bikes this 1300s i think you're going to be getting another 1300 yeah, looking at you? one so there might be another 1300 in the stable there's a flock of the gs 1250s here you can even do the toro trail thing if you want on the husky 350s make sure you check out toro adventure or toro trail the links are down below give them a shout come out have some fun Lyndon, thank you very much for having me. Absolute Always pleasure, sir. Always, Always a pleasure. Back. Work, work, work. <laughs> it's a tough life, isn't it? Hope you've enjoyed it, folks. Remember, smash that subscribe button for me. Cheers. Look after yourselves. Get on out there whenever you can. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!